Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at a connection between polar equations and parametric equations. We're going to find that equations describing polar graphs can be put into a parametric form. And the great thing about this is that it allows us to use the tools we develop for parametric equations in analysis of polar equations. For example, how do we find the slope of a line tangent to a polar graph? Can we calculate the length of a polar graph? How about area, etc.? We'll look at one of these applications in this video, the slope of the tangent line, and consider other applications in future videos. So the basis for our work here is this. Suppose we have a polar equation R equals f of theta, say for theta running between alpha and beta. If we have a point P, stay with coordinates R theta on this graph, then the R coordinate must be f of theta. So f of theta comma theta is on the graph. And again, these are polar coordinates for this point. Now, as we saw in an earlier video, it's easy to find the Cartesian coordinates for a point if we have the polar coordinates. The Cartesian coordinates, we'll call them x, y, are given are found by calculating x equals r cos and theta. Remember, the r here is f of theta, so x is f of theta cos and theta. And likewise, y, f of theta sine theta. Again, we remind ourselves, theta runs between alpha and beta. Now, what we actually have here now is expressions for the x and y coordinates of a point on this curve in terms of a parameter theta. In other words, we have come up with parametric equations for the graph described by the polar equation r equals f of theta. And this means we can use the methods of parametric equations to answer many questions about this polar curve. So we'll look at an example here. We're going to consider the graph of the so-called three-petaled flower given by r equals 2 sine of 3 theta. So we're going to find equations for the line's tangent to the curve at the ends of the three petals and find the slopes of the three lines tangent to the graph at the origin. So let's construct the graph first. So as we did in the last video, we're going to take a look first at the Cartesian graph. So theta on the horizontal axis, r on the vertical axis, and then graph r equals 2 sine 3 theta on this. And we've colored the various lobes of the graph, but uh, this goes through a complete sine oscillation three times, once between 0 and 2 pi over 3, and then a couple more times after that. Now, what this graph shows us, the Cartesian graph, is that uh, when theta equals 0, r is 0. And then r climbs to a distance of 2 at pi over 6, and then drops back to 0 at pi over 3. And so this first arch here in the Cartesian graph corresponds to this red arc, this red lobe over here in, in the flower. So in particular, as theta goes from 0 to pi over 6, we move out to this point and then back in towards the origin. Next, the green picks up. Now, the green part of the graph, it, r is negative. And this part goes from pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3. So that would be between this angle, pi over 3, and this one, 2 pi over 3. But again, the r being negative means anything we might think of up here gets graphed with negative r values, so comes down here below the x-axis. And so there we see again the r going from 0, in this case out to minus 2 and back to 0. And then the blue part picks up and completes the graph with this blue petal. It turns out then as you go from pi to 2 pi, the graph just retraces itself. So this red portion here again corresponds to the red portion over here. So, uh, this kind of gives us a nice idea of the flow of the graph. It's really a very continuous motion from red, the origin, up around the red, down around the green, and then around the blue. So in our analysis, because the curve is traced twice as theta runs in 0 to 2 pi, we really only have to work with the theta values between 0 and pi. In particular, we see from the Cartesian graph that the tips of the petals occur at points where the absolute value of r is maximum. 
course, those get us as far from the origin as we can. That's what we mean by the tips of these petals. And those maxims of absolute value of R occur here, here, and down here, where the absolute value turns out to be minus 2. We can also see that the polar curve passes through the origin when R is 0. And again, from the Cartesian graph, we see that happens at 0, pi over 3, and 2 pi over 3. And then that repeats through the pi, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3 cycle over here. And as you look from the graph, we can see that we seem to pass through the origin three times as we follow the flow of the curve. Going like this once, twice, three times. So let's convert to parametric equations, then we're going to use our parametric uh, methods for finding the slopes of the tangents. So the x-coordinate, again, is given by r cosine theta. And remember the r in this case, r of theta, is twice sine of 3 theta. So x is expressed as 2 sine 3 theta cosine theta, and the y is given by 2 sine 3 theta sine theta. So at the point with polar coordinates 2 comma sine 3 theta, that's the r value comma theta for the angle, the slope of the tangent line is given like this. So we saw in our study of parametric equations that if we have a parametric description of a curve, the slope of the tangent dy dx is given by doing dy d theta and dividing that by dx d theta. So we're going to take the derivative of the y expression in the numerator, that of the x expression in the denominator. And we've computed that, those derivatives in this next line just using the product rule and the chain rule. So you might run through and check that you can uh, verify these calculations uh, with these derivative rules. So let's return to our problem. Let's first find the equations of the lines tangent to the graph at the tips of the petals. Now, one tip occurs for theta equals pi over 6. And the coordinates at this point, call it P1, are given like this. So when theta equals pi over 6, you can check that R equals sine of 3 theta. And the 2 out in front here. R equals 2 sine of 3 theta turns out to be 2. And so P1 has these polar coordinates. And if we translate those to Cartesian coordinates, the x coordinate is R, which is 2 times cosine of pi over 6, which is root 3 over 2, giving us the root 3. And the y-coordinate, r sine pi over 6, turns out to be 1. So we're going to be concerned with both types of coordinates here. So let's set theta equals pi over 6 in our dy dx formula. So bringing that from the previous page, uh, the slope of the tangent at this point, we'll call it m1, it's given like this. We have just taken our formula from the other page and plugged in pi over 6 everywhere we saw theta. And that's an impressive looking calculation, but there really isn't much to it. Uh, we see that cosine of 3 times pi over 6 is cosine pi over 2. That turns out to be 0. And so everywhere we see cosine 3 pi over 6, those are 0, so these terms actually vanish in this particular calculation. And in the next part, we can then see that we have sine of pi over 2 here. Both those are 1. And so this really just turns out to be minus cotangent of pi over 6, which turns out to be minus root 3. So it was a messy-looking calculation, but the trig functions, the trig values were nice, so things worked out pretty easily. So we now have the slope and a point on our line. By point slope form, the line has the equation y minus 1 equals minus root 3 times the quantity x minus root 3. And this simplifies to y equals minus root 3x plus 4. So there's a tangent line to one of the uh, ends of the petals. The other two are quite similar. Uh, let's move on to the point theta equals pi over 2. That was the point of the tip of the lower petal. And again, we consider both the polar coordinates for that and then convert that to the Cartesian coordinates. The slope of this tangent turns out to be 0. Again, that's easy to see if you plug theta equals pi over 2 into the dy dx formula. So this means this tangent line, if it has slope 0, passes through the point 0 minus 2, just has the equation y equals minus 2.
and another petal end occurs at theta equals 5 pi over 6. The point on this tip of this last petal is in polar coordinates 2 comma 5 pi over 6 and that converts to a Cartesian expression of minus root 3 comma 1. You can also check that the slope at this tangent line is given by root 3. Again, just plug these uh, this theta value into our dy dx formula. We get root 3 for the slope. And so the tangent of the curve at this third pedal point turns out to be y minus 1 equals root 3 times x plus root 3. Again, point slope form. This simplifies to y equals root 3x plus 4. And so in this picture, we've actually again graphed the three petal flower. And here are the graphs of the three tangents we found going through the points of those petals. So for part B, uh, we're now going to find the equation of lines tangent of the graph at the origin. Again, the graph passed through the origin three times, and those three times are characterized by theta values of 0, pi over 3, and 2 pi over 3. For the theta equals pi over 3 passing, uh, we find that uh, letting theta equals pi over 3 in our derivative formula, the derivative of theta equals pi over 3 turns out to be, and again, here are our theta values plugged in. And once again, this is really a pretty easy calculation. Here we see sine of pi in these back two terms. So sine of pi is 0, so those last two terms are going to vanish. And again, the 2 cosine term is duplicate. So this is really just tangent of pi over 3, which gives us root 3. The line of slope root 3 through the origin has equation y equals root 3x. Similarly, when theta equals 2 pi over 3, we find that dy dx equals minus root 3. So a second tangent going through the origin is y equals minus root 3x. And finally, when theta equals 0, it's easy to check that this derivative expression turns out to be 0. So we have a horizontal tangent at this point. In, in this case, and that tangent line is just the x-axis, which of course has equation y equals 0. And then here's the graph of all the lines we found, the three-petal flower, the three tangents at the origin, correspond to the three different passages through the origin, and then the three tangent lines we found that correspond to tangents at the ends of the petals. Got a nice, pleasing picture there. So for this video, uh, most important thing is that a polar equation in the form r equals f of theta can be converted to parametric equations that describe the, the curve that is given by the polar graph. And again, these equations are found just by converting the uh, coordinates from polar to Cartesian. The x-coordinate is r cosine theta. But on this graph, r is f of theta, so f of theta cosine theta, and the y coordinate given by f of theta sine theta. Again, why is this such a neat thing? Why is it so important? Well, because this allows us to use techniques for parametric equations in a polar setting. And as one example of that, we showed how we can compute the slope dy dx at a point f theta comma theta on a polar graph. The slope turned out to be given this way, again, taking advantage of the parametric setting. dy dx for parametric equations y of theta, x of theta, is given by dy d theta over dx d theta. y of theta was f of theta sine theta, so we get this derivative on the top. And x of theta was f of theta cosine theta. And then by product rule, we get this expression. This is not worth remembering because if you know the parametrics and know how to get these parametric equations out of a polar equation, you can come up with this result should you need it. It's way too long to memorize, but this simple parametric path derivation uh, makes it very easy to recover should you need it. So in the next video, we'll take a look at other applications of the parametrics. For example, how to compute arc length for a uh, polar graph. You'll also take a look at some ways to calculate the area enclosed by polar equations.
拜。